Hey guys, welcome back to the next video and if you are new to the channel, this is Richard from Welshy Tech and welcome. Now, we have something quite interesting here. This is the NVIDIA PNY RTX 5050 graphs card. Should you buy it in 2025? Let's find out, shall we? This is the RTX 5050 from PNY. This is the dual fan variant. This is NVIDIA's most latest architecture, which is Blackwell. The CUDA cores on this particular GPU is 2560 with a GPU or clock speed of 2317 with a boost speed of 2572. The memory on this are SK Hynix and it is 8 gigs of GDDR6 with a memory speed of 20 gigabits and it is memory interface of 128 bits with a memory bandwidth up to 320 gigabytes. The total power or TDP of this GPU is 130 watt. This has four connectors. It has three DisplayPort 2.1s and a HDMI 2.1. This GPU does have a eight pin connector. The bus type is a PCIe Express 5.0 times eight. This GPU, when it comes to ray tracing cores, they are fourth gen, the tensor cores are fifth gen. It does support DLSS4 and the max resolution is a 7680 by 4320 at 165 Hertz. And the recommended system required power supply is a 550 watt. And this does have a uh, TDP of a 130 watts. Okay, so this is the Velocity X software. This will be primarily for PNY cards. I didn't actually know they had this software, but this software does allow you to see what graphics card you've got. The overall video bias version, the driver version, does allow you to adjust the fans. Does it actually tell you the temperature, the clock speed, the memory clock, GPU load, as well as memory load. And then obviously there's the overclocking. Now, this is the simple core clock and memory clock. You can press this by here for a power target, frame rate and thermal target as well. As you can see, I've left that to default, but that's pretty much it when it comes to the software. This is how you'll uh, overclock or, well, yeah, primarily overclock the PNY graphics card. Okay, so when it comes to the overall test system, it is my AM5 platform. It's a Ryzen 9 7900. There's 32 gigs of DDR5. It's an MSI B650 motherboard. It's got a 1,000 watt co-link power supply, and it's housed in the BeQuiet Chatterbase 800 FX. Now, for the test methods, I've done some 3D Mark. I've also done some games as well, as I have included some DLSS uh, testing with Hogwarts Legacy at quality and balanced. So, what we'll do first of all is we get through the 3D Mark ray tracing tests, which I've done Port Royal, Solo Bay, and Times by Extreme, because it does do both the CPU and the GPU. So, Port Royal, the GPU test was at 28.5 FPS with a score of 6174. The Solar Bay Extreme was GPU test at 66.23 FPS with a score of 9470. Times by Extreme, the GPU score was 4672 with a GPU uh, with a CPU score at 8618 now for the gaming benchmarks i've done 1080p 1440p at high resolution high settings no ray tracing so for 1080p the far cry 6 averages were 148 with a 1 percent low of 103 starfield averages were 55 with a 1 percent low of 29 Indiana Jones, the average was 59 with a 1% low of 55. The Hogwarts Legacy was an average of 86 with a 1% low of 75. And F124 was an average of 147 with a 1% low of 116. So for the 1440p resolution, the average on Far Cry 6 was a 107 with a 1% low of 83. Starfield was an average of uh, 52 with a 1% low of 5, uh, 45. Indiana Jones, unfortunately, I couldn't get a uh, average or a 1 
100% low because the game crashed and it said the reason was because of out of VRAM. So for Hogwarts Legacy, the average was a 60 with a 1% low of 50 and F124 was the average with 109 at and 1% low of 85. So for the DLSS testing, I only tested it with Hogwarts because unfortunately I don't have any other games that actually utilize DLSS because most of my games are mostly AMD with their version of DLSS. So I did 1440p with quality and balance and Hogwarts Legacy. So for quality, the average was a 68 and a 1% low of 57. And then on balance, the average was 70 with a 1% low of 60. One. Okay, so my my overall opinion, right? If you're looking for a 1080p card, then this is definitely a good card for that. It does great the 1080p. 1440p certain games, especially that via uh, VRAM limitation with this, it's only got eight gigs. There is going to be some of a difference. Now you're going to have problems with games that generally have bigger textures bigger games like indiana jones for instance that's very a recent game and it's a big game and it does use a lot of vram now whether you're looking for a 1080p card then this is definitely a good option but there are obviously going to be other uh, options on ebay for like second hand cards you can get a 2070 or 2080 around this price or a little bit cheaper and it would perform better than this that obviously it's going to be up to you but all i'm just going to say is if you're looking for a 1080p card it's not a bad option but of course there are other options out there so yeah and this card when it comes to thermals it never exceeded 67 celsius and to be fair it's only 130 watt uh, tdb card so you know uh when it comes to like dlss and stuff i don't really use that i never did with my 3070 and i don't really use amd's uh version of it because i personally play native that's where the benchmarks were they were native resolutions and i did include dlss because this is an nvidia card and dlss is obviously going to be an improvement when it comes to like gaining performance but obviously that's going to be up to you whether you want to use dlss or even buy this card that's going to be up to you but what i want to say is that a big thank you to pny this was an idea that obviously i've been cooking a little bit with some people behind the scenes to get this off the ground because i've been wanting to get an nvidia card in for so long yeah it's a low-end card but this is my foot or my step into that. I've got AMD cards, you know, from Sapphire, so I'm all right for those. But it was the NVIDIA cards I wanted because it's nice to have two different brands to compare with. So, yeah. So a big thank you to PNY for sending this out for review. And as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend or week ahead of you. Don't forget to subscribe. This is Richard for Welsh Tech. Good.